Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Look at these vegan guns. Folks, please support our show. We've been demonetized by YouTube for a long time. <laughs> Coming up on two years. And so support us. You can see scrolling below all the ways to support the channel. Become a Rockfin Premium member. Join us on Patreon. You get uh, bonus content. Uh, I have a P.O. box at GrahamElwood.com, so some people like to stay anonymous. There's merchandise to buy at GrahamElwood.com, Political Vigilante merchandise. You support the show and you get some cool stuff. It's the holidays. Do some gift giving. Um, so I very much appreciate you, the best and smartest fans in the world. That's why this is the People's Channel. One of the reasons why it's the People's Channel is because, uh, what are we at now, three and a half years later? I ain't letting go of the Epstein thing. I ain't letting go of it. I ain't letting go of it. So new lawsuit by some Epstein victims against two of Epstein's banks. This is how you heard them folks. We've shown you how the banking industry, I'm going to show you again, tied into Epstein. There's no way he could have made all of this money without help and knowledge of the banks. That's what this lawsuit is contending. And they've got a pretty good case. I first saw this on Julie K Brown. So she's the journalist out of the, the Miami Herald who first broke the story really hard in the summer of 2019 that led to his arrest and then led to him hanging himself with a paper t-shirt. Totally believable. I know, my God, it's totally believable. Um, the extent to which these banks help Epstein traffic underage girls and women's remains a mystery. This lawsuit may finally reveal the powerful men and women at these banks who enabled this enterprise. So we're going to get into this. But this is, this is, I subscribe to the Miami Herald because of her. <laughs> so this is the actual Huffington Post article. Jeffrey Epstein victim Sue Banks, they allege were facilitating sex trafficking operation. Epstein and his co-conspirators could not have victimized without assistance from the wealthy individuals and financial institutions, said a lawyer. Here's the lawsuit. Two anonymous Epstein accusers filed lawsuits against Deutsche Bank and J.P. Morgan Chase in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York on Thursday. One of the things I will try to uncover here, excuse me, who the judge is. Remember now, Judge Allison Nathan, who was the judge in the Jalene Maxwell trial, had evidence not be used I mean, she really tipped the scales in favor of Maxwell. Maxwell, in May, when the whole Roe v. Wade thing was happening, which is, a, I'm not minimizing the repealing of Roe v. Wade. I'm totally pro-choice. It's ridiculous that we don't have pro-choice across the board in this country. I've done videos showing how the Democrats could have codified it and didn't. But my point is, when all of that was happening in May, very quietly... Very quietly, Judge Allison Nathan limited the total number of years Maxwell could be sentenced. That happened, I believe, on May 3rd when the SCOTUS, the Roe v. Wade SCOTUS came out. Then she got sentenced in June to 20 years in prison. Oh, wow, that's tough. R. Kelly, black man, got 30 years in prison. Weird. The white lady with all of the uh, wealthy contacts in Epstein's black book, she gets 10 years less than the creepy pedophile musician who appeared to probably just act alone. Interesting. And then again, over the summer, when everyone's talking about Roe v. Wade and all this other stuff, Maxwell quietly gets moved to a low security prison in Florida. So this is why who the judge is, is going to be important in this lawsuit. But we're going to focus on Deutsche Bank and J.P. Morgan Chase. And again, this is what they allege, that the banks knowingly benefited from assisting, supporting, facilitating, and otherwise providing the most critical service for the Jeffrey Epstein sex trafficking organization to successfully rape, sexually assault, and coercively sex traffic the women. This is an excellent tactic. 
Because this, this question here, which I've been asking and many other Epstein, Whitney Webb and other people have been asking this very question. How can you have a multi-billion dollar global sex trafficking business? And all oh, the banks didn't know. We've talked about how Epstein, it was proven, had this fake hedge fund. And we, we, it was revealed, you know, this is what Epstein would do. He'd have these parties at a house. He'd have wealthy and powerful people come over. The butler would say, oh, would you like to have a massage from a beautiful young woman? Oh, sure. It would be a child, underage child. They would perform sex acts. It would be videotaped. And Epstein would go, now we got you on tape, rich, powerful guy. And then weird, that rich, powerful guy would suddenly have some investment in Epstein's hedge fund. It was revealed in 2019 when Epstein got arrested that his hedge fund was not even, no one was, there was, there was no real investments. There was no trading happening. There was nothing. It was like, huh, this is weird. So how did these, when you're dealing, this isn't like a $500, you know, somebody opened up a bank account. When you're dealing in tens and hundreds of millions of dollars, the heads of the banks are very aware of everything that's going on very aware when you get into that type of number. So there's no way they were like, huh? I don't know. Gee, Graham, you might be, you might be coming up with crazy conspiracies. I'll show you in a second that it's not. Again, Epstein and his co-conspirators could not have victimized without assistance from wealthy individuals and financial institutions. There's no way you can do this alone. Because this is why I want to make this very clear about Epstein. This is why we've been we've been covering this for for three and a half years now. This isn't like one creepy pedophile guy that molested a couple of kids, kept it hidden, and the, boy, the neighbors didn't know. Which that's obviously awful. This is a multi. You can't hundreds of kids, the flight logs, all of this stuff, and we've heard from victims like Virginia Roberts Dufresne. She's like, it was happening in plain sight. Everybody knew. The doctors knew. The pilots knew. All of these people knew. How could they all just, and sure, maybe some of them were scared or threatened or whatever, but the point is everybody knew. So hats off to this law firm for going, yeah, we've got some hard evidence here. Bradley Edwards, a lawyer at Edwards Pot Pottinger, one of the fir firms bringing the suit. could not have victimized without assistance from wealthy individuals and financial institutions. So this isn't just me, oh, you know, vegan surfing comedian YouTuber making this. This is the lawyer bringing this up. And what this lawyer is doing is finally legally going after this and, and wanting answers to this question that I've been asking. Why have I been asking this question? Because of this photo. I've shown you this photo probably a dozen times in my Epstein videos. Why is this important? This, this photo that I've shown you for three and a half years now, this lawsuit proves how important this photo was. CEO of Barclays at this time also was the CEO of JP Morgan Chase one of the banks listed in the lawsuit, Deutsche Bank and JP Morgan State. Larry Summers, former secretary of treasurer. So again, let's go back to what this lawyer said. Not look, all you comedian YouTubers are all crazy. This lawyer is looking at this same photo and probably has even harder evidence now because he can get subpoenas could not have victimized without assistance from wealthy individuals and financial institutions. Well, here's some wealthy individuals. There's Bill Gates, whose own wife divorced him because of his ties to Epstein. Bill Gates that we have shown has been on Epstein's plane. Bill Gates said, oh, I only knew Epstein going back to 2011. We've shown you evidence on this show, hard evidence that he's known Epstein since 1997. Here is Boris Nikolic, Gates advisor, he was the CFO of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The chief financial officer was also Jeffrey Epstein's, the executor of his will. Is this a random coincidence? Well, this lawyer doesn't think so. And this law firm and this lawsuit doesn't think so. So again, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, Treasurer Secretary, Bill Gates, executor of his will, all pals with Epstein. That's too much of a coincidence. We've had former child crimes investigator on this show, Eric Oldenburg, 
who retired from the Phoenix police department. He said, Graham, if I was a lead investigator, this is way, there's no way we wouldn't just let this slide. We wouldn't be investigating all these people. Let's talk about Deutsche Bank. Remember when the gunman kills the son of the judge overseeing the Deutsche Bank Epstein trial? There was a Deutsche Bank Epstein trial in July of 2020, a year after Epstein hung himself with a paper t-shirt. Weird coincidence. What was the result of that Deutsche Bank lawsuit? This isn't just, just two months ago, September 23, Deutsche Bank settles Jeffrey Epstein vetting lawsuit for $26 million, which means they settled out of court for $26 million. So what this lawsuit just the filing of the lawsuit is showing and hopefully what the evidence that will come out here again, if the judge is on the take or one of the inner circle, if the judge like judge Allison Nathan in the Maxwell, she was the Maxwell judge. She was a member of the Quill and bones, which is the sister secret society of skull and bones, Quill and dagger, excuse me, Quill and dagger. So, you know, there's like fraternities and sororities. Well, in the creepy blue blood Ivy league filth, ruling class training psychopath facility. There's skull and bones with that's the creepy secret society that the men go to. And then the creepy secret society that the women go to judge Allison Nathan, I've shown you on the show how, so we have to be aware of who the judge in this case is. It's going to pay a key role, but hopefully this evidence will come out because there's this, there are Deutsche bank. This is from the New York times. There are Deutsche bank executives responsible for serving Jeffrey Epstein. When New York, this is from a year or two ago. When New York regulators punished the bank for its work with Mr. Epstein, no individuals were names. The time, the New York Times identified them. No one was named. Again, we keep asking this. How come nobody is named? How come Jalene Maxwell gets 20, 20 years, the most she can be given, thanks to Judge Allison Nathan, is now in a country club pr prison in Florida. No one has been named. How come no one, so she acted alone? Apparently, Jaleen Maxwell trafficked these, these children to an empty field. She acted alone. She just trafficked these kids to an empty field and did it with nobody, did it alone. Epstein's dead, so it was just Epstein and Maxwell. We're all just supposed to believe. And when 118 pages of new flight logs were released in December of 2021 during the Maxwell trial, showing more powerful people on the plane, showing that Donald Trump originally believed to only be on one Epstein flight was on five Epstein flights. Nobody talked about it. The corporate media wouldn't go after Trump because if they go after Trump, then everyone's going to have to go after the Clintons and everybody else. Trump on five flights, Bill Clinton on 26 flights, Hillary on two flights. When are we going to actually prosecute these people? Let's hope this lawsuit brings them out. When is this maggot, this British royal bag of shit pedophile, when is he going to, why, why isn't he being extradited to this country? Why is he walking free when Julian Assange is in Belmarsh prison? Why? Can you explain that to me? He should be in Belmarsh prison. This piece of shit. The royal family. There's rat face Jalene Maxwell in a country club prison. She should be getting her ass kicked. She should be getting shanked in prison right now. Oh, look, there's Epstein, Maxwell, and Prince Andrew all hanging out at some royal family fucking pedophile festival. Look at these maggots. So I get demonetized, mainly for talking about Epstein. Sounds like some lawyers in New York agree with me and agree with this show. And hopefully more evidence is going to come out. I want to see more people prosecuted because I don't know, call me crazy. I think raping and selling children around the world for money is kind of horrible and makes me want to eliminate the entire human race. So let's just, you know, do our jobs. This is why nobody trusts the government. I don't trust the Democrats. I don't trust the Republicans because of this crap. Bill Gates is involved in this big, rich money people, Bill Gates, who didn't give the patent for the COVID vaccine to didn't want third world countries to get it. Cause he wants them to die. Cause he's a eugenicist. All the wealthy people took the vaccine. He didn't want poor people to have it. Hmm.
Epstein and his co-conspirators could not have victimized without assistance from wealthy individuals, Bill Gates, Les Wexner, creator of Victoria's Secret, and financial institutions. Bradley Edwards, a lawyer at Edwards Prettinger. Arrest them all. Arrest them all. All the money, the dots, hit the truth. That's how you make Gotham great again. Support our show so we can keep doing this. Google, which owns YouTube, has been censoring us. They're, they run ads on my videos. I don't make money off the ads, but they do. So they say your content is if you've offended the guidelines, you, you, we're demonetizing you. So Graham, you can't make money off your videos because it's too offensive and shocking, but we can. Google, which we know has been working with the intelligence community since 2011. Hats off for this lawsuit. We're going to keep following this and hopefully someone will name someone other than a dead guy. Someone. Hmm. So weird. Won't let this case go. Won't let this case go. Shave your knuckles for justice. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. We are still in our like ninth month of demonetization from YouTube. So support what we're doing at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, which is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. It's free to sign up and there's a premium level at $10 a month. And for that, you get everybody on the platform's premium content. Myself, Lee Camp, Ron Placone, Jimmy Dore, Whitney Webb, Kim Iverson, Abby Martin, and many, many others. You can also support what we're doing at Venmo at Graham-Elwood and go to GrahamElwood.com. We have a PayPal button and a PO box. I also have crypto wallets, which are all in the show notes. Thanks for supporting what we do.